right, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I'm the blogger behind writerdrawing.com. And I know it's been two weeks since my last video, but my camera died. We had lots of issues. The lighting in this room was kind of meh. I think I've gotten it fixed since then. I'm looking at my video um, like monitor here and things look better. I might have some slight improvements that I want to do regarding like brightness and stuff, but overall I feel like we're making progress in this new house. So I appreciate you guys all waiting for my next video. So today we're just doing a little get ready with me using a bunch of new makeup products I've um, purchased or was sent to me. A lot of stuff is from Bare Minerals, their Bare Pro line because I was at an event in New York a couple weeks ago celebrating the launch of their new Bear Pro Concealers and the Gen Nude Blushes. So there, you're going to see a lot of the Bare Mineral stuff in here. Um, I am playing with the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette on my eyes. I also have on the newer uh, Esquito Unison Synthetic False Lashes on today, so that's fun. And we're playing with the Buxom Big Tease Mascara as well. So a whole bunch of newer things and... Uh, yeah, just wanted to get ready with you guys and chat it up. So if you're interested in seeing how I got this look, then just continue watching. Thanks so much. So we are just going to get into this, get ready with me using these products. I only have my brows on, so um, we're going to just go right in with the Red and Perfect Canvas. And since I am using this foundation for the first time, I'm only going to use it on half of my face. But... I still want to kind of test it out at home, so I will kind of do a wear test informally, and then if I think it's interesting, we can do a wear test on my channel. We're going to go in with the famous Soft Glam Palette from Anastasia, and I've had this for a few weeks. I ordered it from her website when it first launched, because Soft Glam is like the definition of the makeup that I like, but to be honest, guys, I don't dislike it. I, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just boring to me because I have all these colors already and I should have known better. Um, and the funny thing is, I mean, it's I'm speaking kind of oddly because I'm not a daring eyeshadow person, but I just, like that's what I feel about this. It's just like whoppers. Um, however, I love this for my Bridal Pro Kit and I will be putting it in my Bridal Pro Kit. I just don't uh, need it for me. but. For the purposes of this video, we are going to use it and um, just do like a basic look. So I'm going to just prime my lids with my MAC Soft Ochre. Okay, so I do like to take a powder, like a skin color powder, and lightly just dust that over the lid to set down the foundation, the primer, particularly from the crease up. I don't always feel the need to use like a, a powder like this on the lid because I do find that that may affect the pigmentation of the shimmer shades that I usually use on my lid. So I don't always put powder on the lid part. I am thinking of starting out with Orange Soda, because that is actually a shade I don't have like in my own personal collection. It's a very light orangey brown. So I'm just going to start that in my transition. So it just is like a little extra step, but if you really want a super seamless blend with your transition shade and your my skin tone, Orange Soda is one to try. If you are lighter than me, Orange Soda would probably be a good transition shade for you. If you're darker than me, orange shade is probably more like a highlight shade. <laughs> and buff that into the crease as more of a true transition. And um, this is going to be a really basic look today. I'm actually super, I think the reason I'm really like over this palette is I'm so over warm toned eyeshadows. Like even when I was going to film this video today, I was craving to use my uh, Tartlet Toasted palette, the like ashy cool tones in that, not Tartlet Toasted, Tartlet in Bloom. I just really wanted to use like cool toned taupey browns, like ashy toned browns. I just, I like the way brown tones look on my eye, I mean warm brown tones look on my eyes, but 
I know I've talked about this before, but guys, I can't, I don't know how many more. Like, and then this Urban Decay back top palette came out. I just literally want to backhand it. Like, I'm just over it. Like, and I don't even care that it might not be very nice, but like, give me a break now, brands. Like, everybody's done the same thing. I'm going to go in with Cypress Umber. And this is actually the brush that comes with the palette. I really kind of wanted to stick with the brush that comes with the palette because I actually really like the Anastasia brushes. I've heard a lot of people say they don't, but I really like them. I think they're high quality, especially for a brush that comes in a palette. And I like the size and I like the, um, the heck was I going to say? I like the bristles. So the lid shade, I know I've seen a ton of um, tutorials with the pretty bronze or the sultry shade and guys they are great colors but I've seen so many of them. I want to use either fairy or glistening these lighter shimmer ones. Which one today? Hmm. I think I'll use fairy. Fairy is a little bit more of a gold tone. Glistening has more of a peach. So we'll do that and I'm just going to use the other side of the brush. I need to pull my mirror in a little close because your girl can't see. But the pigmentation on these are great. I have Modern Renaissance. It was one of my favorite palettes of I think 2017. Um, like it won of it won my like best of the year. Pretty. Um, so I like her formula. If she could do something like this with more neutral. Tones. I know that sounds so basic, but I love her formula, so I wish it was just, I don't know, not as warm. Okay, so we got that lid shade on, now I'm just flipping over the brush, back to the fluffy side. I will go back in with Rustic, that second shade we used, the, not the darkest brown, but the medium, and build up that darkness in the crease now that the lid shade's on. Okay, let me grab my eyeliner, I'm using MAC. Black Track Gel Liner today, which is not the blackest gel liner I've ever used, but it doesn't get really gross on my brush. Like I've had that Inglot gel liner and I do use that in my pro kit because it's so black and it looks nice on brides, but it does kind of ruin my makeup brushes. So let me go in and line here. One line down, and I'm using a MAC 263 um, angled brush, which is my holy grail for gel liner. It's how I learned how to do, do gel liner, and I literally bought the same brush for my Pro Kit. I love it. If you ever want to learn how to do a good winged liner on someone else, or even on yourself, I recommend this to my makeup artist friends too, who struggle on doing it on other people. Okay. So we got the eyes, most of the eyes kind of done. We're gonna skip now to the face. We're gonna go in with the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation, Broad Spectrum 20. This is new to me, I've never tried this. I'm super excited. Again, I have a beauty blender and a brush. You know what, I don't think I'm gonna use the beauty blender today because this is not a wear test, we're just getting ready. So, shaking it up. My makeup desk is a mess. Okay has a pump with a lock, so that's nice. I'm going to start with one pump, and we'll see how this goes. And I've never used this before, so I'm excited. Okay, just picking it up with my Sephora um, Professional Mineral Powder Brush. So one pump is giving me, I would say, light medium coverage, and it definitely has that feel of being long wearing and kind of mattifying. I'm going to go on with another pump, that is, and put it on the other side. The, I think this is one that does kind of dry fast is my gut impression here. So you kind of need to work quick and then build after you've already applied a good layer. So that was one layer. Yeah, I would say this is 
medium, light medium coverage with one thin application because we just used two pumps for the whole face. Let's go in with a little more to build it up. I'm just quickly blending everywhere because this baby seems to dry fast. In comparison to other fuller coverage long wear foundations, today my Estee Lauder Double Wear, this dries faster and it has lighter coverage than the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Tarte Amazonian Clay. It reminds me, the finish looks a lot like Tarte Amazonian Clay, but the Tarte Amazonian Clay is more forgiving on the skin. Concealer. So they also came out with a new Bare Minerals Bare Pro Stick Concealer. I have shade Medium Warm 7, and it is good for all different parts of the face. You can use it under the eyes, you can use it on um, blemishes on your face, and I would say more water resistant and long wearing. So uh, let's just give this a go on um, on the face. Hmm. So I have used this concealer before and I don't love it on my under eyes. But today I applied a little extra eye cream when I was doing my skin prep. So let's just, what is doing down there? It sounds like he's taking snow off a sled in my house. We don't have a sled. So I don't know what he's doing. Okay. And the coverage I'd say is like medium coverage concealer. But it is a little on the drying side if you are not oily. So again, this is a concealer I recommend more for oily skin or for discolorations blemishes on the face, not really under the eye so much, but for purposes of the video, we're gonna use it under the eye. All right, I'm going to warm up my fingers and use my fingers. So, as you can tell, it definitely has a nice brightness, but, for sure, this is not for the driest of skins by far. <laughs> so you have to have oily, normal to oily skin. I'm um, going to set the under eye with the new Estee Lauder Set Blur Finish Perfecting Press Powder and Translucent. This is just a um, pressed translucent, bleh, translucent powder. I am going to use my Dampen Beauty Blender to use the powder under here. Now this is a great powder. I couldn't believe how much I like this because you think a pressed translucent powder isn't going to be um, the greatest, but it does a really nice job of actually blurring the skin. So if you're on the market for a new translucent powder that kind of blurs your skin, check out the new Estee Lauder one. It's pretty good. Okay, the rest of the face, honestly, I don't feel like I need much setting powder, but for the purposes of trying new products, I'm going to go in with the new, or it's not new, but the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Powder Foundation. I have shade Golden Ivory 08, and as you guys might know, if you've seen videos from me before, I do like to use a lighter foundation powder on top of liquid foundations because I think powders tend to oxidize, so although this shade looks pretty like good match for this powder, but anyway, I'm just gonna use this, um, it's a Bare Minerals brush too, Bare Minerals Core Coverage Brush to lightly set mainly the center parts of my face and where I put the concealer because I don't, my face feels pretty matte and uh, I don't wanna go too heavy. All right, while well, we kinda let the face settle, like all the stuff kinda melt into the skin, I actually am going to go in and do the bottom of the eyes. So what I'm going to do first is use this Estee Lauder Onyx Eye Pencil and line the lower, lower waterline. It's just black. I'm only going halfway. I usually only go halfway, especially during the day if I use black liner because it can be a little intense. And then we'll go back into the Anastasia palette. And we'll go back 
into rustic, the mid-tone brown with the pointier side and blend it in. And then on the inner corner, I will use fairy on the tip of my finger and kind of just pat that in and then blend it out with the fluffy side. Kind of gives it a little more highlight. And then I will take fairy and kind of pop it here too in the inner corner with the fluffy brush. So you can tell the eye look is pretty, but it's pretty basic as well. So that's why this is a great palette for like proms or weddings for professionals. Let's put a little mascara on. I'm using this new Buxom Big Tease mascara. I actually got this in a box box from Influencer. I have tried this mascara before. I feel like I don't think I liked it very much, but let's give it, give it a shot. It is one of these conical brushes. Okay. I feel like my hair is in my eyeballs. But it's not too bad. You know what I think I'm remembering now? I think it smudged on me. I don't think it was so much that I didn't like the formula. I think I remember it smudges on like my like below my brow bone. And I hate that. That is like a no go for me. So we got the eyes essentially done. Let's go into the face, right? Yeah. So I'm going to use my Estee Lauder Heat Wave Highlighter. One of my favorites. It's a beautiful golden highlight. So nice. And I think this is permanent now, so that's even better. So using my Sephora Pro Highlight Brush that I'm obsessed with, I'm just going to pop this on the usual spots which is slightly above my brow and on the highest part of my cheekbone right here. I don't go further in than the middle part of my eye because for me that enhances texture and I'm oily so I don't want that. I just want the upper cheekbone to have some glow. Center of the nose, chin, upper lip. And with this foundation it's a little matte so I might even throw some here just to give some luminosity to the curve of my face. I'm going to be using the Too Faced Sun Bunny Bronzer, which is a little bit of a shimmery bronzer, but it's more like a satin glow. It's really pretty for this time of the year where the skin can look a little lackluster, but you want to warm it up a little bit with a little um, warmth. <laughs> you want to warm it up a little bit with a little warmth. Uh, you guys know what I mean. Like just to look a little more healthy and sun-kissed, but see how pretty this is? It like really warms the skin up in the prettiest way, like super natural looking, even though it is a little satiny of a shimmer. It's not the greatest at contouring, but I use it anyway. I feel so much better, like I'm alive. All right, and last is blush, and we are using the new Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blushes in Bellini Brunch, a pretty peachy pink, peachy orange actually. Very Stephanie-esque. So the nice thing about these powders is they are very easy to not go overboard. The color is intentionally sheer. So, um, I mean, although it does pack a punch, um, but it's nice because it blends so smoothly and creamy. I know this looks intense. You guys know my move. I put a little more on, I kind of let it sink into the skin for a minute, and then I brush it off. So on lips, I'm gonna go in with my MAC Strip Down Pencil, which is like a brown nude, beigey nude. Okay, and then these are the new Bare Minerals. I know there's a lot of Bare Minerals in here, but I went to a Bare Minerals event a couple weeks ago in New York and got some of this stuff. Okay, so this is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Lip Lacquers. They are super intense, glossy, um, they're not liquid lipsticks, but they're full pigment glosses. And this is in the shade Darling. It's like a pinky rose nude. <laughs> so let's 
So the brush is actually very interesting because it's a doe foot, but it almost has like a bevel in the middle to really pick up a lot of product on the wand. They actually have a color called like hashtag something life goals, I think. Hashtag life goals. It seems like it's only sold on the Bare Minerals site. That color is like, looks like so up my alley. But this is the one I got for free, so I'm using it. But these are sticky glosses, so if you don't like sticky, you're not going to like these. But if you like a long wearing gloss with full color, like the MAC Pro Long Wear lip glasses, you're going to love these. I personally like a stickier gloss because I like that it lasts long. Now that we've got our lip on, let's blend in the color with my dual fiber brush so everything looks seamless. This is my trick of the trade. It's not really a trick, I know a lot of people do this, but for me, I find that if I don't kind of go heavier with my face color, like the brush and blush and bronzer, in an hour or two, it kind of has disappeared off my face. So I go a little heavier in the morning, I buff it in, and then I, at least it's still there in a little while, as opposed to if I just go light, it's gone. Like it just disintegrates into thin air. I will show you the lashes I wanted to use are these new Esquito um, Unison false lashes. They are, you know how Esquito makes full mink lashes? These are synthetic. All right, I'm gonna pop them on, I'll be right back. So we've got these lashes on. Now this is the style heart and soul, I think. Very wispy and light, super natural. But I think they're really pretty. They went on very easy. They do feel very comfortable. I don't know if you're gonna be able to appreciate very much on this video, like if you're gonna be able to tell a difference, but yeah, oh, they look really good. So we'll see how they wear throughout the day, but this packaging is really annoying, especially if I wanna reuse these, which I'm sure I will, cause they're Esquita lashes and they're meant to last a few uses. So just my two cents there. So, all right, let's, uh, Let's do a little intro.